Recipients of the Prime Minister's Award for Teaching Excellence were announced on February 13th at a ceremony in Ottawa. These awards honour elementary and secondary school teachers across Canada who have had a proven impact on students in the fields of science, technology and mathematics. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Award recipients, honored guests. Bonjour et bienvenue, mesdames et messieurs, lawyers et laureates. M. Reti Distingue, it is my great pleasure to be here to welcome you to today's ceremony in honor of the 1996 national recipients of the Prime Minister's Awards for Teaching in Excellence, Teaching Excellence in Science, Technology, and Mathematics. My name is Jan Eastman. I am the president designate of the Canadian Teachers Federation. Je suis Jan Eastman, president designé de la Fédération Canadienne des Enseignants et des Enseignants. The CTF was created in 1920 to ensure that teachers' opinions were heard and taken into account in any actions which affect them. The Federation also coordinates the sharing of ideas, knowledge, and skills among its 13 provincial territorial member organizations, which represent 246,000 teachers. Our main focus for the past several years has been to promote and defend public education in Canada. La FCE raconne et encourage l'innovation dans l'enseignement. C'est une des raisons pour lesquelles je suis heureuse de participer au programme du prix du premier ministre pour l'excellence dans l'enseignement des sciences, de la technologie et des mathématiques. Je suis aussi très fière de pouvoir célébrer les efforts méritoires de plusieurs de mes collègues. I now have the pleasure of introducing you to the Secretary of State for Science, Research and Development, First Department, Industry Canada, administers this prestigious program on behalf of the Prime Minister, Dr. John Gerard. Mesdames et Messieurs, bonjour. It is good to see so many of my colleagues, members of Parliament here, and uh, welcome to this support for uh, teaching and teachers who are excellent uh, today. As Secretary of State for Science, Research and Development and a former medical doctor, I'm really proud to be part of this event which honors a group of teachers who so successfully fired the imaginations of Canadians about science, technology and mathematics. Vous le donnez le goût des études et les orienter vers, vers des carrières type de celle que j'ai moi-même trouvé très enrichissante et que, qui sont très importants pour l'avenir du Canada. Avant d'entrer en politique, j'enseignais à la faculté de médecine à l'Université de Manitoba. Je sais donc ce qui ce que cela signifie de se trouver devant une classe d'essayer d'inspirer de jeunes esprits, et je sais combien cela peut être difficile. The teachers that we honor here today have demonstrated passion, ingenuity, tremendous commitment in teaching and inspiring our young people. They have all found innovative ways to make science and mathematics come alive for their students. They're making a difference for young people in Canada. Yesterday, Minister Pettigrew unveiled the Youth Employment Strategy, which contains a series of initiatives to provide young Canadians with meaningful work experiences. The government is Canada is committed to helping young people to get the skills and experience they need to succeed in the new economy. I'm pleased to announce today that Industry Canada has struck an innovative partnership that will recognize teachers in all disciplines. En collaboration avec quatre 
Société orientée vers l'avenir, la Banque royale, Bell Canada, Merck Frost et Dupont Canada, les prix du Premier ministre pour l'excellence dans l'enseignement continueront et récompenseront des éducateurs qui pré préparent leurs élèves à relever les défis de demain. Les sciences, la technologie et les mathématiques seront toujours essentielles, mais des compétences touchant à d'autres disciplines seront également reconnues. These corporations who are partners with us have shown a vision and a generosity in taking part of this part in this awards program. On behalf of the Government of Canada, I would like to thank you very sincerely for your contribution. We have with us today senior representatives from all four partners, uh, and I would ask you to please stand and be recognized. Uh, Mr. John Cleghorn, Chairman and CEO of the Royal Bank. <clears throat> Linda Gervais, who is Vice President with Bell Canada. <laughs> Monsieur André Marcheter, President, Merck Frost. <laughs> and Mr. John Cameron, who is Vice President, DuPont Canada. La contribution de ces entreprises est d'une grande générosité. Mais je crois que l'on peut dire que la participation du secteur privé à des programmes tels que celui-ci constitue un investissement, un véritable investissement dans l'avenir du Canada. With the help and the guidance of people like uh, Jan Eastman, and teachers federations across Canada. This kind of corporate support will help us build the skills and the capabilities that the young people of Canada need to prosper for the next millennium. One of the skills which is very important in the new millennium is the ability to access and use the internet. Over half of Canada's 16,500 schools are now already connected to the internet. And we're working very hard with the provinces and territories under our SchoolNet program uh, to connect every school and every library by the year 1998. Les projets de ce type aideront les élèves à acquérir les compétences nécessaires dans la nouvelle économie. Corporations can do a lot to help schools in this direction as well. And as an example, Corel has just promised to provide a free copy of its Office Suite software, which includes website creation tools to every school in Canada who register with SchoolNet. That's over, at this point, over 8,000 units and what a wonderful gift that is to the schools of the country. <laughs> Following the awards presentation today, I invite you to come forward to explore an interactive demonstration of the SchoolNet's grassroots program, which highlights how Canadian teachers will be at the front and at the back, are using technology to enrich the learning experiences of their students. Je vous invite également à parcourir les collections numérisées d'art canadien. Ces jeunes Canadiens ont préparé afin que des certains de classe dans toutes les régions du pays puissent les consulter sur Internet grâce au programme de collection numérisée de Rescue. 
La technologie a changé notre manière d'apprendre. Elle nous offre plusieurs possibilités merveilleuses d'apprentissage, mais il reste une constante et c'est l'influence personnelle qu'exercent les enseignants et enseignantes dévoués sur la croissance et la réalisation de leurs élèves. It remains tremendously important the personal influence which teachers have. I think all of us have at least one teacher who stands out in our memories as having been very influential. A teacher who captured our imagination. A teacher who turned us on to a particular subject and got us really captured, enraptured, and motivated. I know I certainly do. I had several. And I'm sure that it, were it not for those teachers that I wouldn't be here today. And so I'm proud that there's the opportunity to recognize teachers now who are doing to young Canadians, are leading and inspiring young Canadians in the way teachers inspired me when I was growing up. Enfin, c'est pour moi un réel plaisir de vous présenter un personne qui est attaché à l'excellence en éducation et qui tient à préparer les jeunes à relever les devis de l'avenir et à saisir les occasions que leur seront présentées. Mesdames et Messieurs, le Premier ministre du Canada, le très honorable Jean Chrétien. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, John, Madame Eastman, partners, Mesdames et Messieurs, members of the House of Commons. It's for me a great pleasure to uh, be here to honor the uh, outstanding teachers. I am delighted that uh, after we started this program that now the private sector is coming along and uh, more or less taking part of the bill. So, so we'll reduce the deficit or we'll put it somewhere else. I see Mifflin with Luke talking about his fishermen right away. But uh, I just want to say that it's a, it's a great thing. When I heard uh, John uh, Gerard a minute ago talking about what we're trying to do at this moment, when I realized that Canada will probably be the first country in the world to connect through the internet all the schools and the libraries in Canada, I'd say the sign that will be the first. And that's extremely important for the future. And one of the great aspects of it that is missed is when I was in Paris a few weeks ago, you know, they, they look at us. Because there's 50 countries in the world who use French as either the first or second language and in schools. And we are the country that is the best place to make anything that is produced in this new world, if I can use that expression to the francophone communities of the world. Et c'est pourquoi, lorsque j'étais à Paris, discutant avec les autorités que nous parlions de la francophonie, j'étais capable d'expliquer que le Canada pouvait être la cheville ouvrière de la participation de la francophonie sur euh, les autoroutes modernes euh, de, 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 des télécommunications. Et d'ailleurs, au sommet de Cotonou, nous avons eu une démonstration à tous les chefs d'État des 50 pays représentés. Et ce qui me faisait le plus plaisir, c'est que toute la technologie était, et le, parler en bon français, le, le software, <rire> et, et, et était du Canada, du Québec, du Nouveau-Brunswick et de l'Ontario. Ce qui prouve que si le Canada, par l'excellence, que nous pouvons nous donner par l'intermédiaire 
des professeurs et ayant conscience des possibilités, nous serons très bien placés pour le 21e siècle. And it's why, for me, it's such a great pleasure to be with the teachers who will challenge the young people of Canada to be the first in all these new technologies that escape some of us. That means that we will be in an extremely good position around the world. Because when I'm traveling the world with Team Canada, you know, we have a great reputation. Because we are known as a country that can produce goods and services of the first class. And that we can have access to a lot of countries because we're blessed with two official languages that are used in more than 100 countries in the world. So for you, the teachers who are devoting your time to make sure that your students are the best. You know, it's for us, the parliamentarians, you know, a great honor and a great privilege to say thank you and asking you to keep up the good work. As John said, there's always some teachers who have marked our lives. And for me, one it was not in science and anything, it was in self-control. <laughs> you know, I see members of the opposition here in the house, and they know that this teacher has been very good for me. <laughs> Because uh, when I was telling him something funny, he will not laugh. And when I was talking to him about a very serious problem, he would have a lot of fun. And he was just good at making sure that I controlled my emotions, you know, facing the difficult task we had in those days to be in a boarding school. Going to bed, I was 21 years old, and at 8 o'clock on Sunday night. So the dark, the, the priest in charge of uh, The discipline will close the light and will take the newspaper to read because it was still sunshine outside and we had to sleep. So it's that type of education, that excellence that we have received, all of us, in different ways that have made it possible to achieve what we have achieved. And the dedication, the dedication of teachers is always marvelous. And it's always a very important point when you grow older, when you meet your friends, the one thing that connects students, former colleagues together is talking about their teachers and the ones who were good and some were a little bit less good, <laughs> but who are not here today. <laughs> so, I want to thank the partners And I want to congratulate uh, the winners. Félicitations à tous et toutes pour un excellent travail. Et je suis sûr que vos écoles, vos commissions scolaires sont très fiers de vous. When you go back home with a little certificate, you know, they will look up at you because you have been recognized as the best in the land. Thank you very much for your good work. I'm now going to call upon the uh, national winners from east to west. Pour 1996, les lauréats et les lauréates nationaux du prix du premier ministre pour l'excellence dans l'enseignement des sciences, de la technologie et des mathématiques sont the 1996 National Award recipients are Dennis Galloway, Amalgamated Academy, Bay Roberts, Newfoundland. <laughs> Mr. Galloway is known as a trailblazer who gets students involved in innovative learning projects. His grade six students were involved with the National Geographic Kids Network seven years ago, long before most other Canadian schools had access to the internet. 
Since then, he has had them solving problems and doing research with students from across North America and around the world. Joanne Patry, Ecole Secondaire Vaudreuil, Vaudreuil, Quebec. Thus, à sa grande curiosité, Madame Patry a étudié dans plusieurs domaines scientifiques, de l'agronomie à la neurologie. Elle communique son plaisir de prendre à ses élèves en leur offrant des activités comme le club science au futur, une simulation d'un voyage en espace. Twitty, Markham District High School, Markham, Ontario. <laughs> Mr. Twitty is known throughout Southern Ontario's York region as the chemistry show teacher because of his annual chemical safety show. Mr. Twitty's successful industrial mentorship program and school presentations have done much to introduce young people to chemistry and have helped overcome stereotypes about the chemical industry. <laughs> Wayne Keith Thompson, Elmont and District High School, Elmont, Ontario. Mr. Thompson has gathered support from industry across Eastern Ontario for his innovative programs, such as a distance learning program that allows students to take part in regular classes while working on a school-sponsored house building project. The video technology and techniques used in this project were also used by Mr. Thompson to hook up with a school on the Isle of Wight in the United Kingdom. Jamie Kwok, Cummer Valley Middle School, North York, Ontario. <laughs> Mr. Kwok puts considerable emphasis on hands-on activities to help students faced with learning a second language and completing the science curriculum. As a result of his efforts, all of his students, especially those learning ESL or with special needs, enter high school with the ability to talk about abstract ideas in their second language. <laughs> Zoltan Korita, Northern Secondary School, Toronto, Ontario. Mr. Korita puts considerable effort into keeping his students aware of the latest scientific developments in biotechnology. He does this by placing his students in research labs where they are familiarized with modern molecular biology techniques used in producing products for interfacing tissue with prosthetics, gene therapies, and anti-cancer drugs. Mr. Korita's students have gone on to succeed in national and international science competitions. Edward James Eastwood Collegiate Institute, Kitchener, Ontario. <laughs> Mr. James has spent 22 years helping students, especially girls, succeed in science. For example, he organized a math and science program for girls at Eastwood Collegiate and prepared materials for the Women Inventors Project. Many young women go on to pursue non-traditional careers every year with Mr. James' support and encouragement. <laughs> 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 
Patricia Beecham Martin Grove Collegiate Institute, Etobicoke, Ontario. Just one of Ms. Beecham's many achievements is a program of five courses in microbiology, biotechnology, running cooperation with local biotechnology companies. When this program was threatened with cancellation, a strong outpouring of support from former students who had gone on to successful science careers helped convince authorities to maintain it. Jacqueline Ed, Greenacre School, Stony Creek, Ontario. <laughs> Mrs. Ed has used her 32 years teaching experience to integrate math and sciences into the primary curriculum. Her students have learned how to read, write, and understand numbers up to four digits and keep a garden to learn about the environment. Thanks to her efforts, girls have become more confident in science and boys have shown more confidence in reading. <laughs> Denise McWilliams, Emerson Elementary, Winnipeg, Manitoba. As a result of Ms. McWilliams' efforts, students at Emerson Elementary have been provided with the opportunity to have fun while they learn about math through early morning math clubs and by problem solving open-ended problems posted on a bulletin board. In addition, students from across Manitoba who have never met Ms. McWilliams are following the new provincial curriculum that she helped develop. Jane Skinner, Ottawell School, Edmonton, Alberta. <laughs> Mrs. Skinner's students learn everything from communications to problem solving skills in the context of the sciences. With one innovative project, Getting Hooked on Science, her grade seven students created aerodynamics demonstrations that were presented during Edmonton's Education Week. Records of her former students show consistently strong performances in the sciences right through high school. Hans Van Kessel, Belrose Composite High School, St. Albert, Alberta. Whether they are studying combustion or electric motors, Mr. Van Kessel's students are taught how to develop analytic techniques that, will it be, that they will be able to use over and over again. Students are drawn to his classes by his infectious enthusiasm and sustained by the self-esteem that comes from learning that they too can do science successfully. <laughs> Michael Zwinyel, Harry L.A. High School, Edmonton. Ainley High School, Edmonton. Long before integrating scientific, technological, and social concerns became the norm, Mr. Zwinyel wrote textbooks using this approach for high school students. He has also used these principles to develop labs, demonstrations, and a traveling chemistry magic show. On provincial exams, his students regularly outperform the average by a considerable margin. John O'Connor, Point Grey Mini School, Vancouver, British Columbia. Mr. O'Connor's students were the very first contributors to the CD-ROM magazine, Science A, eh? developed by, the, by Vancouver Science World. Mr. O'Connor's grade eight students are expert users of computer technology and have considerable success at national science fairs and in math competitions. <laughs> and 
and Kenwell Singh Neil Steveston, Steveston Senior Secondary School, Richmond, British Columbia. Mr. Neil teaches students to think and respond to problems in different ways and helps them see how math can relate to modern life. He has made graphing calculators and a computer lab available to students during a time of shrinking budgets and has passed on his expertise to other teachers. Mr. Neil recently received an award for his work as the co-host of a highly regarded television show called Math Shop. Ladies and gentlemen, the 1996 National Recipients of the Prime Minister's Awards for Teaching Excellence in Science, Technology and Mathematics. For more information, please contact Industry Canada at 1-800-268-6608. For many of us, when we look back at our high school days, there's always one teacher who stands out in our minds. For hundreds of students here at Markham District High School, it's a chemistry teacher named Carl Twitty. It, the ammeter measures how many electrons, and the voltmeter measures what force they have going through the circuit. Carl Twitty's teaching career spans over 30 years. In that time, he has made a significant contribution to education in York Region. Besides inspiring his own students to excel in science and chemistry, Twitty is very involved with turning elementary school students onto the subjects. His efforts have not gone unnoticed. This month, Jean Chrétien honored Twitty with the Prime Minister's Award for Teaching Excellence in Science, Technology and Mathematics. Well, it's certainly a, a feeling that you can't imagine. Uh, it's uh, when you're certainly late in your career and you've spent a lot of years teaching. It's uh, it's an absolutely wonderful feeling. We've got a zinc battery and a nickel battery. We've got a zinc nickel combination. And the Prime Minister isn't the only one impressed with Twitty's accomplishments. His current and former students are his number one fans. He's a really good teacher. He moves fast, but he really livens up the class with his sense of humor. He's really funny, and I don't know, he just has this way that makes you understand. Certainly he has inspired me some in chemistry. I was disappointed somewhat with the grade 11 course in chemistry, but coming to OAC with Mr. Twitty has been a wonderful experience for me. You're an engineering science student at U of T. Does he have anything to do with that? He does. He, uh, he, he can really turn a student on to chemistry. And he opened my eyes to what is uh, available in, in organic chemistry and biochemistry. And that's what I'll be doing, biochemical engineering, ultimately. For the record, over 140 of Twitty's students have gone on to become teachers. A number of them, in fact, are currently teaching, you guessed it, science. In Markham, Phil Martino, Regional News. Okay, as opposed to a vote meeting. Here's an aerosol can, uh, it's a hairspray can. Just 
try and stop me. <laughs> For close to 30 years, Carl Twitty has been lighting fires in the minds of students across York Region. From innovative chemistry safety shows to the creation of new curriculum, the Markham teacher is one of education's leaders in science. In February, Twitty became the third teacher in York Region history to receive the Prime Minister's Award for teaching excellence. Well, actually, when I found out, I was on the treadmill, and uh, I thought it was Bell Telephone calling to try and get me back on their long-distance plan. I guess the first feeling is disbelief. Uh, you feel they got the wrong person, and uh, all 15 of us at Ottawa last week felt that we couldn't figure out why we were chosen. It's just such an, uh, a unique way to wind down your career. It's, it's, I wish every teacher in the, in the system had a chance to win an award like this because there are many, many deserving people out there that, that deserve it. Uh, there's a fine line between whether you've won it or whether you haven't, and uh, I just happen to be on the other side of the line this time. Twitty traveled to Ottawa to pick up his award and to meet with Prime Minister Jean Chrétien. We had to go through a, a rehearsal and um, when we, we did they actually uh, made a mistake when they came to handing out my certificate. I was supposed to be the seventh and when they uh, called out my name I was in the number three position which was a, a woman and uh, so Mr. Chrétien he got up there and he says you don't look like a woman and I said, I don't feel much like a woman, and so we, uh, they exchanged certificates, and he, he just took it in stride. Uh, he was such a warm, affable individual. Uh, I said many times he, he could be a farmer from down Belleville where I was raised. He was just, he was so, uh, so warm and, uh, and uh, welcoming. If you can't pull that out now, it's, it must be all right, because otherwise it would draw air in from, from that. First of all, when I was in grade 13, my mother suggested that I go to this meeting of, uh, for students that were interested in teaching, and I said, there is no way I will ever teach. And uh, I got into university, and I realized I was going to have to get a job one of these days, and a friend of mine was uh, becoming a math teacher, and I got thinking about it, and so after my first year, uh, there was nothing else I really wanted to do. I just, I finally had a goal, and and uh, that was all I ever wanted to do after that. The students perceive my teaching style differently from what I perceive it. I, some of them perceive me as being kind of strict and maybe tough and maybe too tough. It's hard to know where to set your standards. I think if you temper that with fairness and with a little bit of sense of humor, that you can, uh, you can still be strict and, and perhaps tough so that you can, you can make them work hard. Oh, he's a great teacher. Uh, the fact that he won this award has really solidified something in, in my mind that I've felt for a very long time. I mean, he's a fabulous teacher, and, and finally the whole country gets to know about it. So. Welcome to our chemistry safety show. Okay, now we'll hit this grease with some water. Whoa! And then some baking soda. Twitty is perhaps best known for his traveling chemistry safety show. Started about 20 years ago, the presentation is aimed at elementary school students to help spark interest in science, but more specifically, to attract females into the field. What I did is I chose things that were invented by women scientists, and uh, I, I sort of made it into a chemistry safety show, which which allowed me to, at the same time, uh, show the students how they could handle chemicals safely around the home. Our world is full of chemicals, and a lot of people fear them because they're, they're uh, unfamiliar with how they react. And, and uh, most chemicals, all chemicals, you can handle safely if you, if you respect them and know their properties. Walking through his classes is a real treat. You see the students who are involved in the experiments, the lab exercises, they're just having a great time. Do we have any fire? alarms go off, none of the smoke detectors have sounded. We have had teachers vacate classrooms, heading over to cafeterias to avoid the various odors and uh, smoke and whatever else comes out of this classroom on occasion. As head of science at Markham District High School, his third York Region school, Twitty has also implemented several new initiatives. His industrial mentorship program allows students to gain hands-on experience in the workforce while his labs in the classroom are closely related to real-life chemistry. 
This lab is uh, a variation of uh, one that they use in industry. What we're doing is uh, analyzing some antacids for the uh, uh, active ingredient content. Most antacids contain calcium carbonate. And uh, in industry, when they analyze their tablets before they market them, they have to analyze them by a procedure called titration, back titration. Well, that process is much too difficult for this level of student. So what I've done is I've devised a, a lab whereby we can decompose the carbonate with hydrochloric acid and measure the amount of carbon dioxide coming off using these, the syringe method. And by calculating the number of moles of carbon dioxide and thereby calculating the number of moles of active ingredient, we can calculate the percentage of active ingredient in each tablet. So what they're doing is they're trying, we're trying to give them some hands-on, real-life chemistry. Uh, you can see where you can make use of this procedure, which is a highly theoretical concept. So I call this beaker brownies, and in a minute you'll see why. He keeps up a, an interesting sense of humor. Um, it really helps to be able to, to laugh in, in a class like chemistry, because sometimes it's a very intimidating subject for some people. Well, he's totally inspired me to continue with my study of sciences. Um, he gave me the confidence to constantly question um, science in general. I can, I can sit in my university lectures and, and argue in my mind with, with the prof and what he's teaching and everything, and it's, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> um, out of all my teachers, uh, there are a few that stand out as the best, and uh, Mr. Twitty is definitely right there. Uh, in that list, he uh, he's a fantastic teacher, and I wish uh, I wish everyone had the opportunity to be guided by a teacher like that. You know, when the gas starts coming out, just keep twisting it to make sure it's uh, it's loose in the barrel. Uh, I guess the the most difficult thing when I retire, which means the thing I'll remember most about when I retire, uh, which isn't that far away. Uh, I'm going to miss the camaraderie with the students. There's, there's nothing, there's just nothing that can replace the, the friends that you make when you teach and, and the students when they come back and, and uh, just have a chat with you and you enjoy hearing about their successes and their failures, but uh, you enjoy just, you're interested in how they're doing. And that's the part I, I think I'm going to miss the most. <coughs> Well, that's our chemistry safety show for this time. Thank you for coming. Award-winning teacher. We're going to meet him later on VR Land News. <laughs> I can do this teacher. He's, uh, he's, he's supposed to be a really hard teacher, but overall, it's supposed to be a really good course. <laughs> This teacher is more than just number one to his students. We'll show you why coming up. Who <laughs> is the apple of his student's eye and today recognized by many. This is Vince Burnham. <laughs> what we try to do, basically, I, I guess, is to try and bring chemistry home to, uh, for the, the average student to be able to understand it. Uh, we'd like to dispel many of the myths that are involved with chemicals. Woo! <laughs> don't turn your back on him. <laughs> I don't think these students realize how lucky they are. Their science teacher this year, apart from being the head of the science department here at Markham District High School, was just presented recently with the Prime Minister's Award for Excellence in Teaching Science, Math, and Technology. <laughs> I really enjoy it. Uh, I, I can remember when I was in grade 13 myself and my mother said I should go into teaching and I said there is no way I will ever go into teaching. A friend of mine got into teaching and uh, there, was, there was no looking back. Up until then I wanted to be uh, an electrical engineer but uh, I, I just love this job. I can't think of anything I'd rather do. Yeah, I had Mr. Twitty last year. He's, he's a great teacher, I know. He's, he's a lot of fun. His labs are great. His the tests are hard, but it's a good year. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard a lot of legends about this teacher. He's, He's, uh, he's, he's supposed to be a really hard teacher, but overall, it's supposed to be a really good course. Okay, Jane, spread it over that way, but okay. be careful. All right, look out. Look out, everybody. 
Woo! Oh, we don't like these. Having fun in science class with an award-winning teacher in Markham, Jane Pritchard, VR Land News. Woo! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Guess that'll be.